Hey guys, it's John from Album Review TV, your home for music news and reviews. Today I am reviewing the fifth studio album by pop punk band All Time Low. It's called Don't Panic and it's their second album in two years. Let's go ahead and get this out of the way right up front. Uh, the awkward major label thing that All Time Low went through. Fortunately, it was just a phase, so I can go ahead and say that and uh, reassure you that they're back with Hopeless Records, which is, I feel like, where they belong and where they're allowed to musically be themselves and express themselves. They signed to Interscope late 2010. Basically, they did not have a good experience there. If you listen to Dirty Work, uh, you know that minus a few standout tracks, uh, it was really just an awkward mess. It was really sad for me listening to Dirty Work because the band has huge potential. And I've said it before, I feel like they can be the Green Day of this generation. What Green Day was to the 90s and even the 2000s, I feel like All Time Low has the potential to be for this up-and-coming generation because they've got so much, they've got spunk, they've got angst, and they've just got passion behind their music and so much energy, and I feel like that's what the music scene, especially the alternative scene, really needs these days. And these are going to be the guys to help do it. And they're back on track here with Don't Panic. I feel like Don't Panic is the correct follow-up to Nothing Personal after the awkward speed bump that was Dirty Work. Musically, it's better than ever, but is it better than Nothing Personal, the party scene, So Wrong It's Right? Let's keep going. The writing on the album is very well done. The only outside co-writer on the entire album was Patrick Stump, a uh, former lead singer of Fall Out Boy, and someone I respect very much, so that's that's cool with me actually you know I'm not a huge fan of outside co-writers but if it's Patrick Stump I mean you still got a very well done song now one thing I did notice when I uh, read the track listing originally is that there was gonna be three outside guest vocalists and uh, even though like they were people I knew and recognized you know they got the guy from Bayside they got Cassidy Pope uh, even though I recognized the names I was still kinda concerned like why are there so many guests on this album but now that I see it in context uh, and actually heard the finished products, I can see that they were used to add richer vocal harmonies on the songs and really just add something else to these songs. Don't Panic has a lot of creative guitar riffs from Jack. Alex's vocals sound better than ever. Even the drumming is on par with past records and, and places. I feel like it's even better and, you know, especially on the faster paced songs like So Long Soldier, the drumming is just excellent. The album as a whole has a very upbeat feel to it, and it never really seems to run out of energy. Uh, you know, that's right, no slow jams. Sorry if you were looking for Therapy 2.0, it's not on here. Uh, honestly, I would not have minded that, another like a slow track that really builds into something awesome like Therapy, because that's one of my all-time favorite, all-time low songs, all-time favorite, all-time low. <laughs> as for my favorites on the album, well... There's a lot of them. Let's go ahead and get started. The first one is The Irony of Choking on a Lifesaver. I really like the title of that song, and that's honestly, I was really excited for that one just because I saw the title in the track listing, and I was like, this seems really interesting. And honestly, it is one of the best songs on the album, probably my second favorite overall. It's got really inventive lyrics on it, uh, really creative chorus. I really like the way it's structured, and... Uh, Honestly, I feel like this is going to be a fan favorite uh, for the band to play live. The fans are going to be singing along, especially to the chorus, I think. And, you know, why can't you just be happy for me? I, I like that. I love the way all the things he's talking about in the song and just saying, why can't you just be happy for me? Overall, the track just generates a really fun and catchy pop-punk vibe. Now, my next favorite is my overall favorite on the entire album. It's called For Baltimore. It's a love song tribute kind of to their hometown, Baltimore, and it's extremely, extremely well done. The song is just perfection. It might be my favorite all-time low track to date, honestly, and obviously the best on the album. The lyrics and the song structure are just flawless, and I don't see how any fan of the band could dislike this song. It's even got a cool little intro that sounds kind of Green Day-ish. My next favorite is Thanks to You. This track features some really standout guitar work from Jack. I really like it. It's even got a guitar breakdown in the song that just sounds awesome and just like totally kind of caught me off guard, but sends a little chill down the old spine. So Long Soldier is my next favorite on the album. It's very fast-paced and uh, pop-punk oriented, and it's got a lot of quick and skilled drumming and has a very solid chorus. 
Backseat Serenade, which features Hey Monday's Cassidy Pope, is another favorite of mine. Uh, I think the chorus is definitely the highlight of that track. Outlines is also a favorite of mine. That's the track that Patrick Stump co-wrote, as well as Somewhere in Neverland, and then we get on to Paint You Wings. I really like the lyrics on this one especially. It's very creative, and it's got rich, rich vocal harmonies on this one, especially on the chorus. The Reckless and the Brave is the next favorite of mine from Don't Panic. It was the first track that was released. It was released for free back on June 1st and then available for download on iTunes later. And I really thought that was cool that the bands kind of gave bands something to look forward to. And uh, it's definitely one of the best tracks overall on the album. It's got kind of an anthem -y feel to it. Feels like it was kind of inspired by Green Day, especially in the writing style. And I thought that was really cool the way it was done and the way it was written. And my final favorite on the album is the final track on Don't Panic. It's called So Long and Thanks for All the Booze. It's a really cool closing track and it's got kind of a nice guitar progression throughout the entire song. I also really like the way that You Gotta Let Me Be Me is repeated in the background of the first and second verse. And it's a nice addition that really adds something to the track. Yes, I realize I just listed 10 out of the 12 tracks as my favorites. I think that says something right there. Look, the album is extremely good. I think it should please any longtime fan of All Time Low. Even if you've been with them since the party scene, I feel like you'll still like this album a whole lot. Forgive the awkward last album and embrace their return to Hopeless Records here. It's definitely a return to form for the band, and as soon as they announced that they're returning to Hopeless, an independent record label, I just pretty much was absolutely stoked for the album and just knew it was going to be good, like I said before. Uh, overall, this album is an easy 5 out of 5 for me. I don't really have anything to complain about for this album, other than the fact that I wish there was one slow song on it. Uh, but that's not really even something I can really complain about. That's a choice for the band. But, obviously, I want to know what you guys thought. Do you like the new All Time Low album? It's streaming right now on their YouTube page, uh, Hopeless Records YouTube page, that is. I'm going to put a link to that down below, along with all my links, uh, my Facebook, Twitter, blog, all in the description below. Please make sure to hit the like button, subscribe above. Thanks for watching, guys, right here on Your Home for Music News and Reviews. I've got a lot of album reviews coming up. Uh, Ellie Golding might be next, uh, her new album leaked, so I will probably try to review that as soon as possible, as well as albums that I missed in September. I'll see you guys very soon.